Liverpool, today known as the great multicultural city of the United Kingdom. However, Liverpool has a darker past that's been swept under the rug. In its infancy as a small town in 1715, when it built its first shipping dock, it rapidly expanded on the back of the slave trade. At its peak, it was known as the New York of Europe, as its number one shipment was slaves. IOIC UK, West Midlands camp, decided to take a trip up to Liverpool to see just how deep its foundations are rooted in slavery. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Good investment, gentlemen. Put her to it, and she'll raise you a fine litter of pickaninnies. That's enough. And start the bidding. Who will offer me 100 pounds with this fine wench? Do I hear 100 pounds? Do I hear 100 pounds? We'll start at 50. Ooh, I have 50 over here. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Sold, Sir Robert Calvert of Virginia. So when you read the book of Deuteronomy, and you go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, the word Egypt means bondage or slavery. So we're saying that the Lord will bring us into slavery again with ships. Liverpool was one of the biggest slave ports in the UK. By the way where have I spake unto thee, meaning the same way that Moses said it would happen is the same way that it happened. And thou shalt see it no more again, meaning we'll never see our homeland again, which is Israel, not Africa. Zondervan, Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, meaning slave men and slave women. And no man shall buy you, which is an old Quaker word which means redeem, because Christ is the Redeemer. We had Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, or black revolutionists. I have a dream. As the house Negro, may I say something to you to give you a true knowledge of yourself and life? Failed to redeem their people. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long there shall be no might in thine hand via the transatlantic slave trade this is just one of the many curses that proves that we are the children of the book that our sons and daughters were taken away and we could not fight or do anything to get them back Shalom Israel, most high Christ bless. As you know, we're in um, Liverpool, known as the New York of trades, especially um, during the 1700s when we were put into slavery. Well, a lot of the trade that was happening. Here's 
another bolt, a smaller one, but um, they managed to fit quite a few on these bolts. I'm talking the way everyone's planked together. So possibly this could have been a, a Black Friday house. <laughs> and on the front of it, yeah, you shows the pillars of uh, Mount Sinai. But yeah, um, I'm going to try and check out this museum and see if they um, hold the truth that we're actually you know, trying to identify people with as well. Thank Christ bless brothers and sisters. Um, we're here today in Liverpool looking at the ships happening in May. Um, Liverpool is actually one of the biggest slave ports in, in Europe. Um, since 1750, they basically, that's when they started the slave trade and that's how um, Liverpool blew up as, as a city basically. Shalom soldiers and brothers, Mosai Christ bless. Israel united in Christ. We have here today, we have a uh, slavery and in particular we, in the UK there is uh, ports uh, London Bristol, but today we're in Liverpool, and today we've got a ship behind us as an example, Kathleen and May. One of the things I want to bring out is that uh, Liverpool is actually known as the slave port of Europe. So today we're here looking at the sea, looking at where our ancestors went through, and we'll bring you more. Shalom. Shalom Israel, Mosai and Christ bless. We're at the Albert Dock, and this is the building behind us, which was probably used as a registry for slaves coming off the ships. dances on important ceremonial occasions. I'm looking at this one mask in particularly in the middle, which is called the Galedi mask, 20th century Yoruba, Nigeria. Galedi. Galedi is a masquerade performed to honor the spiritual powers of elderly women. Shalom. Well, obviously, as we know, the Bible speaks of these things that's happened to our nations and things that they got involved with, including things like this called idol um, idolatry. So, going to give you a uh, scripture from um, First Man um, Samuel, chapter twenty-three. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So one of these is a, you know, a course of what happens to us here for performing things like idolatry, which is sin, according to the Bible. Shalom, soldiers and brothers, more sign Christ blessed. We're here in Liverpool in the Slavery Museum looking at the artifacts um, and the history of what happened to our people during the 1619 slave trade. Here is a particular image featuring a runaway slave, right? It's, the scene is called The Haunted Slave from the year 1861. And here you can see that from the image here, the image of a runaway slave. He's actually got his chapels and chains free and he's here with his woman fleeing for freedom. Now our people were so strong and so zealous in trying to get their freedom that the Most High gave us strength and power. And here you can see the slave actually the slain, one of these beings here. Okay? And here you can see the image of the hounds that were sent against us in order to retrieve and round up those runaway slaves. Right? Our people were so brutalized and terrorized by our enemies as depicted and told in the book of Deuteronomy. The 28th chapter, verse 15 through to verse 68, which tells of the curses which would fall upon the children of Israel if they didn't keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. This, in particular, being one of those curses, going into bondage and being under subjection by our enemies. Shalom, soldiers and brothers, more sign of Christ's blessing. So one of the things we're showing now is the slave ships. It gives you a detailed look on how the slave ships are organized. So the slaves on the bottom, the wicked white slave masters on top. Yeah. Also got some artifacts over here. One says he took the limb of a tree 
uh, two prongs and shaped it so that it would cross the back of my neck. It was then fastened in front with an iron bolt, just like as the scriptures say, we could have iron around our necks. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. The stick was about six feet long. It's just showing you a few things. Also the yoke, see that in the picture? Also the stick that I was just describing at the top. So as you can see, these people are wicked as hell. Just in the uh, slave museum, as you can see, some of the instruments of cruelty that we used on our people. Got the branding iron. Right there. We've also got one of the whips. to point out one thing the devil himself is showing you who he is we read here it says the devil was in the englishman that that he makes everything work he makes the negro work the horse work the ass work the wood work and the wind work i just wanted to show you the devil himself is showing you who he is these people are wicked as well as you can see also we've got a mock scale of plantation would it look like plantation houses, the fields, the what? I'm going to read the description of uh, what which is our history and slavery. Plantation owner and the manager. Plantation owners often borrowed money to set up in business, but the profits made it worthwhile averaging 10% a year in the 17, 17 to 1800s. They spent their wealth building homes in London and in the country they invested the business and protected their interests by buying seats in Parliament. Many returned to Britain as soon as they could, leaving the running of their estates to attorneys and managers. The manager's house was substantial and was located so that he could overlook the activities of the plantation. So basically they made a lot of money from slavery. As you can see, one of the things that we were compelled to do is dance on the slave ships. This is actually fulfilling one of the prophecies of the book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 3. It says, For there they that carried us away captive acquired of us a song, and they that wasted us acquired of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Abolition as a member of parliament for Liverpool. <laughs> Rodney Street. Admiral Lord Rodney was a distinguished naval hero who won victories against the Spanish and French navies in the Mediterranean and in the West Indies. So, this is Jamaica Street. Basically, it says Jamaica Street was the largest British colony in the West Indies. It was seized in 1655 and became the main. Um, this destiny of Liverpool slave ships. Many Liverpool merchants also had business interests there and some owned estates. Earl Street says members of the Earl family were slave traders throughout the 18th century. They included John Earl 1674 to 1749. 
his son Ralph, also no Thomas and William, and his two grandsons Thomas and William. So this is like some of the background information of the people in the streets where they lived and, and how they done their business. Owned slaves, and that they owned slaves in Jamaica. They even had estates in Jamaica. I went back. You can see this is Liverpool. Just come out of the slave museum. This is where people would have gone after they got off the slave ships. They would come straight through here. Hey, Shalom Israel, Mosai and Christ first. It's not. Right, we're in front of the docks here. And as you see, you can see all the industrial complexes. Now these are the modern day ones, but our ancestors built up this area. So this place, this is why it's full of affluence. But today these um, heathens can live off of the benefits of our forefathers' backs. As you see, you can see a bridge over there. Um, you can see in industry obviously looks like probably steel or ironworks or factories on the far side of the bay. Now, probably on this dock here, it says it's deep water. so. If our ancestors were coming up and someone was giving trouble, they may have put leg irons on him and chucked him down in there with weights and it, he, would, he would sink to the bottom of the sea, so there may be bones of our ancestors in this water today. Alright, most high in Christ bless, Shalom.
Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.